This is me from 10 years ago. I looked a lot different, didn't I? Who am I? Oh, 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 the helmet. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. <sighs> you know what else looked different around 10 years ago? It was everyone's new Christmas tradition, Star Wars. Back then, the prequel trilogy had just ended with mostly negative reviews. This was the end of Star Wars as we knew it. George Lucas wasn't going to make any more. He was happy with his six movies and pretty much called it quits. For ten years, people thought that there was never going to be another main series film until Disney stepped in and fixed that. But in the middle of those ten years, there was a new addition to the franchise that even remained canon after the Disney buyout. And that was Star Wars The Clone War. This told the tales of the Clone Wars, between the events of Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Which makes a lot of sense. In the second film they say, Begun. The Clone War has. And then it's immediately over in the next one. So instead of having the prequel trilogy be about the Clone Wars and not just Anakin, they made a show. Now I'm not going to review the whole show right here. That would take too long. What I will review is the movie that began the series. The movie was actually the first three or four episodes smushed together and released in theaters in 2008. I actually remember seeing it in theaters when it came out. And we're going to look at it here today. This is Star Wars The Clone Wars. The movie begins with a narrator instead of a traditional text crawl. It says that Jabba the Hutt's son was kidnapped and Jabba wants the Jedi to find him. Mace Windu and Yoda decide that Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are the only Jedi they can spare. Anakin and Obi-Wan are in the middle of a battle and can't get into contact with Yoda. So Yoda sends a messenger that also happens to be Obi-Wan's new Padawan. Master Yoda was very specific. I'm assigned to Anakin Skywalker and he is to supervise my Jedi training. But that doesn't make any sense. We'll have to sort this out later. Hang on, that doesn't make any sense. Whose stupid idea is it to give Anakin Skywalker a Padawan? Remember that this takes place right after Attack of the Clones. Do you remember Anakin in that movie? He was barely a Jedi Knight, whined most of the film, and did diddly squat the rest of it. But this does lead into something fascinating with the Clone Wars. Anakin is... cool. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it either, but Anakin becomes a pretty cool guy. He's constantly being a smartass, telling jokes, messing with Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. He's pretty cool. Makes me really wish that this Anakin was in the prequels. Anyway, the next 20 minutes is Anakin and Ahsoka trying to destroy a shield generator so that they can beat the bad guys. Not a lot to mention here except Anakin and Ahsoka don't get along at first. Anakin says she's being snippy with him and then calls her snips. For the rest of the series, this nickname never goes away. Now, okay, this is a spoiler for Season 2 of Star Wars Rebels, but at the end of that, Darth Vader and Ahsoka fight. Can you imagine if he called her snips? Perhaps I was wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. It was foretold that you would be here. Our long-awaited meeting has come at last. Snips. I'm glad I gave you something to look forward to. We need not be adversaries. The Emperor will show you mercy if you tell me where the remaining Jedi can be found. Snips. Then you will die. Snip. 
lips. As Anakin and Ahsoka leave to find Jabba's son, Obi-Wan talks to Yoda about if Anakin is ready for a Padawan. Let's just hope Anakin is ready for this responsibility. Ready he is to teach an apprentice, to let go of his pupil. A greater challenge it will be. Master this, Skywalker mess. Wait a minute, you gave Anakin a Padawan so he can learn to let go. Okay, so this is probably because they sense that he's going to have to let go or he'll turn to the dark side. But here's the thing, I think he does know how to let go. Like he really knows how to let go. Because as soon as Padme is in danger, he lets go of his friends. He tries to kill Obi-Wan, he tries to kill all the other Jedi, he kills younglings. So I think if anything, Anakin has a problem with letting go rather than without. But as quickly as it's brought up, it's dropped, as Obi-Wan goes to Tatooine to negotiate with Jabba, while Anakin, Ahsoka, and the clones try to find Jabba's son at a monastery. Now tell me if this seems familiar. The monastery is on top of a mountain, so the Republic forces have to climb it with their tank things. Yeah, apparently Anakin took a page out of the Fire Nation's book. This is really similar to the episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, when the Northern Air Temple was being invaded. Now, I can let this go. I mean, it's not like that episode and this movie were directed by the same guy. Wow. Uh, how did that come up in the writer's room? Hey, uh, Dave, we were trying to come up with this cool action scene for the Clone Wars. Uh, do you have any ideas? Oh, yeah. Well, I, you just give me a couple hours. I'm sure I can think of something. Well, we need an idea in the next five minutes, so the show's canceled. Oh! Uh, uh, how about a temple on top of a mountain that Anakin and the clones have to climb up with tanks? Wow, that's a great idea! How do you come up with it? Well, sometimes... It just comes to me. Anakin and Ahsoka find Jabba's son, who they name Stinky, and are about to leave when Asajj Ventress, Count Dooku's assassin that he never had an attack of the clones and won't have in Revenge of the Sith, attacks our heroes. They get away and Ventress calls Dooku to say that she doesn't have Jabba's son. And it's here that I really notice the animation. Why, you may ask? Dooku's beard and mustache is made of plastic squares. Obi-Wan's got that going on too. His hair is even fragmented. The animation isn't terrible, but it can be distracting at times. If you watch the show, then remember that towards season 4, the animation gets better. And also that Rebels looks really good too. Anakin and Ahsoka are about to go back to help the clones when they realize that Stinky is sick and they need him to get medical attention. That changes our plans. When that doesn't work, they decide to leave for Tatooine immediately. Count Dooku tells Jabba that his son was killed and that the Jedi want to end the Hutt clan. The ship is attacked as Anakin and Ahsoka land on Tatooine. Meanwhile, Padme and her ever-changing hair turn this movie into a noir with one of the worst characters in Star Wars, Zero the Hutt. This guy is so weird. Like... So weird. I can't... I don't have any jokes. I can't write any jokes for this guy. He's right. I have nothing. So it turns out Zero was involved in the kidnapping of Jabba's son. Because we needed to fill another half hour, so let's bring in a pointless villain. Padme is captured as Dooku goes to fight Anakin. And, by the way... Have any of you actually looked at Anakin's lightsaber? Well, I happen to have his lightsaber here for reference, and look at this thing. This thing is beyond uncomfortable. Like, you got these things that are, they stick out and they hurt, and then you can barely find a good place to like hold this, because there's all this crap here, and then the button and stuff. It's like, who would actually use this lightsaber to fight with? Anyway, Dooku and Anakin fight, and they finally use the Force. 
Okay, what am I talking about this time? It's most highlighted in the show, but there are many situations the characters get in where it would be easy to get out if they just used the force. Push some droids, make things fall, I don't care. Just do something. Anytime they get caught or stuck somewhere, I keep screaming at my TV for them to use the force. This is the only time that the force is used in a creative and logical way. So Zero is arrested by the clones, Stinky returns to Jabba, and a treaty with the Huts is in order. All's well that ends well. So, that was the Clone Wars movie. It's really hit and miss, but so is the show. When the Clone Wars is good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's really bad. Some of the stories you can immediately tell if you're going to like them or not, but there are some surprises along the way. The droids are incompetent, but get hilarious dialogue. The main characters are great. The action is spectacular. Hell, they even make Jar Jar into a tolerable character, and that's no small feat. But for every good story, there's a bad one. Like when this jerk Jedi has to take command of the clones in Anakin's absence. He turns out to be evil after four episodes of being racist to the clones, and then he's just a boring, generic bad guy. If you like Star Wars, I would recommend this, if only for those good episodes. But if you want a more consistently good show, then you're going to need to go check out Rebels. In the end, Star Wars The Clone Wars is getting a C. And that's pretty much it for this video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to do what I always do on Christmas and New Year's. Atari? and the Twilight Zone Marathon on Sci-Fi. That's not a paid promotion or anything, I just like it. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. And I heard him exclaim as he ended his review, Merry Christmas to all, and may the Force be with you.